All right, so now we're gonna get ready to set up the GR8 here. All right, so we can hook this up. We need to make sure we're using the correct cable. This GR8 has smaller cables too that are used for the diagnostics, starting system, charging system testing like that. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure we have the battery testing charging cables right here. And we're gonna go ahead and get this hooked up. You'll notice these battery terminals look a little strange. That's because they have a form of dielectric grease on them to keep them from corroding over time. So it's a good idea to make sure you wiggle these cables around or wipe some of that off to make sure you're getting a good connection. If they're corroded or dirty, you should always clean the terminals, inspect and clean the terminals on the cables and the battery post before you do the battery charge, right? So you get a good connection. So I've got these hooked up. We're gonna come over here. I'm gonna turn this so you guys can see a little bit over there. We're gonna hit the on button. I already have it plugged in. We're gonna turn it on. Unlike the traditional basic charger we have over there, I tell you guys, hook it all up and then plug it in last. This one's not as essential to do that on because it is a smart charger. It, is, has, a, it has a processor built into it. So when it's plugged in, it's, it's safe to hook up, okay? So we're gonna select our language, English, and you just follow the prompts on the screen and use your pad right here, all right? We'll grab the camera and bring it over so we can see a little bit better. All right, so we're gonna come over here and we're gonna look at the screen. And the screen says battery test diagnostic, system test, power supply, jump start, manual charger, key off draw, cable drop test, info, DMM for digital multimeter built right into this, battery test, new for a battery, new battery, and a setup. So there's a lot of options in here and even a help menu. So I always keep on the back of this the quick start guide of how to do everything, okay? But also on the screen right now, there's a lot of neat things that you can use this for. Today's objective is just using it as a manual battery charger. So we're gonna go over to manual charger. Here's the neat thing about this. You see on the bottom of the screen here, it says 12.68 volts. You guys come over and take a look at the light. It says 12.68 volts. That's pretty cool. It's doing our open circuit voltage test right there for us. So that's why I, I really like this machine. And I also have this machine so you guys can get used to seeing it because a lot of OEM manufacturers are requiring this machine in their dealerships as an essential tool, okay? So it's cool because it's giving you the open circuit voltage test right there. So we know it's a fully charged battery. I didn't have to go get a meter or anything. I just hooked this up and now. All right, but let's pretend that we're gonna charge it because it needs charged, all right? Let's, let's say that was a 12.2, 12 12 all right? So we know it's a little discharge. So we're gonna come in, we're gonna select manual, to enter. You have the choice of out of vehicle or in vehicle. So a lot of our shop batteries back there that we use to replace in these cars for our shop cars, every so often periodically, I'll have you guys grab them and they'll probably do that this week. I'll have you guys do it this week to practice your chargers. We'll get them set up on a, on a workbench and we will charge them out of the vehicle to make sure that they're in tip top shape. Right now, this one's in the vehicle so we're gonna bring this down to in vehicle. We're gonna hit next. It's a regular battery. It's not an AGM. All right, so it's not an AGM. Do you remember what AGM stands for? Absorbed glass mat, all right? Absorbed glass mat. You guys are gonna to start to see a lot more of those in the coming year, all right? They're out there now. They've been out for a long time. They're gonna start seeing, they're becoming more and more popular. So this is a regular battery, so we're gonna go ahead and hit regular i want to limit current because remember we talked about in our lesson in the classroom that we do not want to overcharge a battery or charge a battery too fast charging a battery too fast causes what overheat. causing it to overheat exactly good job baby so it causes it to overheat and that also shortens the life of the battery so a slower charge is better if possible so we're going to limit current hit next we need to figure out what amperage we want to set this at so remember we talked earlier about CCAs or cold cranking amps, right guys? So this is 750 cold cranking amps. You guys have a calculator on you? Pull it out, Let me, let's see what we got. So 750 cold cranking amps. So we do 750 by what? Divided by 70. Divided by 70? 
what do I come up with? 10.71. 10 so we want to limit this around the 10 amps. All right. How do you find the max charging rate? Divided by 40. Cold cranking amps divided by 40, and we have 18.75. So we want to keep it below 18, around 18 or below. Okay. So with that said, we're going to go with the slow. Because remember, slower is better in this one, in this race. All right, so we're going to limit it to 10 amps. We're going to go ahead and hit next. And I want to put this thing on. I usually recommend on a slow charge, I recommend starting with about an hour charge, 60 minute charge. Sometimes that's not feasible in our shop. I get that or in a, or in a shop out in industry because the car needs to go or get out of here. That might be where you have to bump it up to a little bit of a faster charge in a shorter time. But if all possible, you want to go a slower charging rate over a longer time. All right, so this one, we're gonna go ahead and change this. You can use the up and down arrows here, or you can just type in the time. So we're gonna type in 60 minutes. I like to charge the battery at. All right, hit next. And now the machine is going into manual mode testing to make sure that the battery is safe. And you just kind of just wait and let it do its thing. This is more of a, you know, diagnostic machine too. So, does some self-testing. And the charge is kicked on. So you can see it's charging. It gives you the readout right here. You guys can come a little closer and check it out if you want. It tells you what the voltage is at right now. It's about 13.2 amps. It was charging at 7.2. It just spiked up a little bit and it starts to limit itself back down below that current range that we have set. Seven, eight, nine, so forth. All right, spikes up again. And it's gonna drop back down below that threshold that we set amp hours and max time right there and then you let it do its work all right it's always important to come back over and check a battery periodically all right when we come back over and check that battery periodically what did i say that we were checking or looking for you guys remember make sure it's charging make sure it's charging so on this machine it's going to tell you where it's at it's pretty slick if we're using a basic battery charger, what tool are we gonna to have to use to come over and test this? Yep, your voltmeter, all right? So we can come back over, 20 volt DC, check it. And this is telling me 13.89. All right. So we come back over and check it periodically with our voltmeter. Like I said, the GR8 advanced diagnostic station here, it's telling us right here, it's pretty slick saves us that step. We're also coming over to make sure something else. We gotta to touch the battery and check for something. Heat. Heat. We wanna make sure it's not overheat. All right, so I wanna touch it, make sure it's not overheat. Throughout, periodically throughout time. I recommend, you know, most batteries you can do, if it's not very uh, discharged, a 30 minute slow charge will give it a lot. If it's at like 12.2, 12.4, you know, usually at a, anywhere between a seven, five to 10 amp, range it's probably going to charge pretty good in that 30 minute window all right but i still recommend coming over about every 15 minutes to a half hour and checking the voltage and checking to make sure it's not getting hot especially if you're charging it long if you're doing an hour charge or a couple hour charge you want to come over and check it make sure it's not getting hot does that make sense all right so once this is all done we need to end this all right we need to shut this down so what we're going to do we're gonna come back over here to the machine. And when it's all said and done, we'll come over and we can hit stop. If the machine's done, if it runs out of the timer, it'll beep at you, make all kinds of ruckus, and it'll tell you, hey, I'm done, basically. And you come over and check it. It even has a blue light here that's really bright that flashes, let you know. But we're gonna go ahead and stop it early. So we have to hit stop. 
It'll ask, do you want to abort the charge session? Yes, I do. There's that blue light and all that beeping noise. All right. I'm going to go hit next. And then we're done. As you can see, we have a significant surface charge on it right now. Okay. Then we need to come over. And what do we do over here first to get this all apart? Even before I do that, let's just... Well, yeah, on this machine at least, let's go ahead and turn it off. I'll usually go ahead and unplug it just to play it safe. It's a good habit to get into. And then you were saying about the cables. Which one do I take off first? The negative. The negative? And then what? The positive. The positive. Awesome.